Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser, taking your questions tonight live. It's Ask Dr. Lori Lott. Get ready. Super chat, super stickers. Good to be with all of you. You can ask me those questions. I'm going to give you the expert answers. I'm going to tell you what I know from years and years and years, decades of experience, major museums, of course, university teaching and appraising and appraising. But I want to start off with a couple of tips for you about some of the things you might find in the thrift store, the antique shop, the yard sale and such like travel souvenirs. OK, so you see all these different travel souvenirs. You want to make sure that you're actually taking something home that actually is from that place. This particular piece, of course, from Central America. And a lot of pe people will bring home masks, all different types, brightly colored, really beautiful, relate to culture, to activity, to rituals and such. But what I want you to look for is what's called white wood. And white wood is one of the things I wanna point out to you. Make sure they are hand carved and hand painted. And the Dr. Lori Cam is gonna help you out tonight as it always does. So you get a sense, in fact, of, the white wood, let me get it to you, there we go. So basically, this is nice, hand-painted, beautiful, great piece, right, cool. But then when you actually turn it over, I want you to be able to see the area that looks lightest in color to you or whitest to you, okay? It's right up here, right here in that area. That, that indicates that the wood is relatively new. It's not old, it's not aged. It hasn't been out in the weather in the, in the elements for a long time. So I want you to think about that. And I want you to also see that it is not carved out by machine, it's carved out by hand. You can see that it has actually been basically carved out this particular piece. So I want you to look at that. I want you to get a sense of that because this is going to help you when you are looking at these types of items, whether you're in the actual place or whether you're in a thrift store looking at somebody's souvenirs who were donated. So I want you to look for those types of things. Also look at how either messy or neat, and I like messy in this particular case, how messy or neat the actual pigment is. This is the kind of information that I can give you that these other people can't who are just doing show and tell of look what I got, look what I bought, this kind of thing. I want you to understand how this all works. Years of university teaching, years of teaching people at my big shows. I want you to get it in these videos. You can do this. You can succeed. Not that difficult to do, but you got to have the right information and someone who wants to tell you the truth. And that's me right here. So thanks for subscribing to the channel and for sharing the channel. The other thing I want to talk to you about, do we have a guest already? We've been doing live guests. Nobody else does this. Do we have a guest already? Let's go to our guest. Hi, it's Hi. Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm so excited. I'm such a big fan of yours. Thank You're you. amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to meet you. Tell me your name. My name is Angel and I'm from Canada. Hi, Angel. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Oh, yes, okay, did. great. It's That's great. great. Well, how are things in Canada? Is it cold? It's very cold at my house. I'm in Pennsylvania. It is cold. Well, the studio is not cold. The studio is always hot. But yeah. at my house, it's actually cold. So um, is it cold up there? Did you get snow? Yes. And actually, we got some today and we hadn't had any in about a month. So... We were like, do you like snow? I grew up in New England. I like snow. So I'm like, oh, good snow. It kind of like you, you get to be in your house and kind of do the things you don't get to usually do. It kind of gives you a day off kind of thing. But then you got to get out and that's too difficult. So is it good for you or is it a pain in the neck? It was okay when I was younger, but now that I'm older, I'm so over it. <laughs> You've done it, right? Oh, You've yeah. done the whole snow thing. The okay. snowmobile, the fishing, everything. Now I'm too Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> oh, gosh. So how can I help you? What's your question tonight? Thanks for calling in. Oh, I'm just so excited to be talking to you. Okay. So I bought this at an auction. All right. And good. It, That's good, yeah. Very heavy. Very and heavy. It, so if it's very heavy, could it be cast bronze? Okay, well, yeah. wait a minute. It's very heavy, but it's on an actual base. It's so, on a marble base, yes. Yeah, is the weight the base or is the weight the sculpture? So that's no. one of the things you got to think about. No, it's the sculpture because I can't oh. lift the whole thing with one hand. Okay, you can't do this. No. You know, like no. with your personal trainer. No, my wrist you want would you to lift one? Okay, all right. Yeah. Maybe that's just my personal trainer who's stealing my money, you could see, right? <laughs> anyway, you're, you're so go funny. ahead. So there is a signature at the back, but I can't make it out. I'm not right. sure. What... I don't care about the signature at the first time. Let's look at the object first. Then we'll get to signatures. Okay. Look at the object. Let's figure out what the object. Okay. So first of all, mother and child and the mother and child looks like they're having problems, right? It's not like, oh yeah, we're so happy, right? Looks yeah. like there's, they're struggling in some way. 
So mm -hmm. this puts it into certain time periods in terms of the history of art, right? Okay. So the social realist time period, the early 1900s or mm -hmm. the late 18. Hundreds, right? When you see a lot of sort of the horrors of war kind of thing, the Madonna and child or the mother and child form is always utilized in those time periods. So okay. it's either 1880s or it's either 1930s. Well, now let's look at the signature. Okay. You got to narrow it down for yourself somehow. You know, I narrow it yeah. down because I got a database in here. Okay. I've been doing yeah. this for years and years and years. I want okay. you to have a way to narrow it down as well. Look at the base. The base may give you tips, right? Okay. The base may say, oh, wait a minute. They're not making these kind of bases at that time. So you want to think mm -hmm. about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so on the back, you can't make out the back. So it's on, on like the front, On the what front, it, it, says, like? it says alarm in French. Yeah. It's alarmed. So that's the title. Yeah. Right? Okay. okay. So that's the title, not the signature. That's basically, oh, help us, like SOS. Okay. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. on the back... It looks like G U I L B E R T. G U I L B E R T, doesn't it? Guilbert, Guilbert? If that doesn't look like that to you. Oh, or it's, yeah, that's what it looks like to me. So you've got late 19th century, not early 20th century. Okay. So now, late 19th century, show me the base. Let me see the marble. So we have this, and it's just a, a screw on the bottom late 19th century okay late 19th century the base is turn of the century i would say and how tall is it cast uh, grass patinated to a green verdigris or a green color yes. right yeah, green now color. this big so yes. that's what eight 16 inches yeah i'd say yeah. more than more than a ruler right more than 12 mm -hmm. inches i'm sorry the u.s i am not doing this the I'm not doing the centimeters. I can't yeah. do it. It's too confusing. It's over my head. I can't do it. Forget so, it. I don't even want to go there. You can do that. I can't do that. Value on your piece is going to start in the $2,500 range, and it's going to go as high as $5,000, depending on the artist and depending on the edition number, how many of them did he make. So he probably made no more than five, maybe 10, but usually at that size, they don't make a lot of them. The small ones, they usually make more of, maybe one of 25, that kind of thing. But typically, it's going to be a low edition number. I'd put value on it low at $2,500. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. You know why? It's original fine art. So there's money in the bronze. There's money in the ability to cast it. There's money in the foundry. There's all value. I say money, but I mean value in the actual making of the piece, right? Somebody has to be able to do this. This isn't just like anybody off the street can just do this. You know, the way like there's all these anybody's off the streets who think that they can be me and they copy yeah. all my content and they can't no do way. that. So, you know what no I mean? Way. So, so is this there, is what it is. Is there a number on it? There could be a number on it and it would look like a fraction. It might be one of okay. six. It might okay. be underneath where the screw is. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'm not telling you to go start taking stuff apart. No, 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 no. But, but that's what you are. So you said how much again? What did you pay for it? $56 with fees at an auction. Okay, $56 with fees at an auction. Probably because the auction house is working on volume. And they're going to get, they're, basically, if you buy at auction, you're going to get a bargain. If you sell at auction, you're going to lose your shirt. Yeah. And I say it over and over and over again. Nothing against auctions. Their yeah. job is to move the volume. Get it mm -hmm. sold. But your job is to look for those great things. Thanks so much. Good to see you. That was beautiful. Oh, nice my God. Thank right you so much. Right right Thank you Thank so you. much, Dr. Laurie. Bye, darling. Keep Bye. watching. Thank you. <laughs> sure, sure. And if you want to watch, you can always watch the binge link. Use the binge link because the binge link, actually, I appraised a wonderful piece on New Day Northwest out of Seattle, Washington. That's King 5, uh, the network there. And I appraised a wonderful Barbie doll from a collection of Barbie dolls. And if you want to watch that one and you didn't see that video yet, it's on the binge link. You could check it out right there. The binge link is in the description right here on the channel. So check that out too. You know, I listen to you when you guys tell me things. And the reason why I mentioned uh, Seattle is a lot of you folks on the West Coast said, Dr. Lori, 7 p.m. on Saturday is too early. It's too early. And we had a poll. And there was a poll. And you guys voted and you said it was 60-40, that 60% of you wanted me to change this to 8 p.m. instead of 7 p.m. the way I was doing this. So it's a little later, later for me, but that's okay. And 8 p.m. is what we're doing Ask Dr. Lori Live now. And there's all other types of extras on the community tab. So 
a lot of the things that we're doing because I listen to what you say in those comments. You're not just making comments to, of course, talk to one another, but you're also giving me information. Um, I said, well, you know what? We can change it. If everybody says that they want to change it, then we went with majority rules and we moved it to eight o'clock. So I hope this is a good time for all of you. I hope you'll tell everybody else about that. Hi, we've got another guest. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for joining me. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Oh, Lori. Did I scare you? <laughs> I, I flipped over real quick and flipped right back and there I was. Well, I wouldn't scare you, but all that, that those racks on all of those deer behind you, that could yeah. be scary. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, my it's husband okay. and Tell Hunter, me. And, and those are his trophies. Well, those it's very impressive. Finds. It's not easy to do, you know. And of course, no. those are those are some big ones. What are what yeah. is that? Like an eight point? Uh, no, he's he's got a wide range of them. We've got four of them back here. I don't know if you can. Well, congratulations. See all that. Wonderful. Yeah, it's, wonder, it's wonderful to have a sport. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I go thrifting and he goes hunting. So okay, makes yeah. for a good makes for a good union. I bet. Yeah. Uh, so I, I wanted to ask you, so I'm really, really new at this. I'm talking maybe about the second week of January. I started getting into some stuff and I went to an estate sale uh, last Friday. Nope. I take that back. On Thursday, I went to a estate sale and yeah, I because picked you up know, a I could call you on it. If you know, you said Thursday and it's Friday or you said Friday. 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 I'm going to hold you to yeah. it. I'm just trying to get my days straight because they're all merging at this point. It's not yeah, easy. But, I went in and they had this picture. It was sitting on the floor. I mean, you could tell that the house that I was in there, you know, they were travelers. I think they worked at a university. So it, they had some really neat stuff, but there was this really small eight by 10 frame picture and I thought it was pretty. So I picked it up. There was no price on it. So I picked up a bunch of other stuff. You know, is, that a good thing or, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Like when you well, see I was no hoping price, to ask. Do you see that as an opportunity or do you see that as, oh gosh, I got to deal with this? Oh, that's an opportunity. Right, right, right. It, I think so too. To I just wondered how you felt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But they told me my total was thirty eight dollars, and so I got the the price that I paid for this just by averaging everything out. So I I averaged on this piece three dollars and seventeen cents, and I got home and I got to look in, and I, the information I'm finding is is little, but it is a signed boogie print. Does that at all look? Can I see the back? <laughs> yeah. So it's got the, let me see if I can get it up close. It's got the WT Burger Company label on yep. it, but there's no registration number. Okay. What do you like about and it? It's, it's hard. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? I know what I don't like about it, but you tell me. You know, first of all, what I'm not certain on is it's it's hard. It's not canvas. Second, right. so I don't know if that matters. It is that matters. I think it's pretty. It's pretty. You know, my mom I fell does in oil paintings, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so for three dollars, you can't go wrong because the frame is worth twenty. Okay. So okay. even if the thing okay. is empty, if the frame's empty for three bucks, it's worth twenty, right? So now you have okay. to look at the back, and those labels that I see on the back tell me a lot. They tell me the pieces put into that frame sometime in the middle part to the late nineteen fifties. I see the framers' points that also are from that same date. I also notice okay. that. You're seeing that it is a reproduction onto a piece of, excuse me, onto a piece of cardboard, which means they've actually superimposed a picture onto a piece of cardboard. Cardboard will deteriorate over time. Value on your piece, okay. probably 25 bucks for the whole piece. It's a picture of a picture. So remember. Well, it's, it, that's what's confusing me. So it's raised, like It texture. is raised. That's right. It has texture. Okay. Because what they're trying to do is simulate the feeling and texture of a painting, even though it isn't that. It is not an oleograph, which I talk about, which is where they use mm -hmm. Dakmar varnish to do this. Instead, what they do is they do it with a method of making the actual support, that piece of paper or cardboard, have texture or have actual um, three-dimensionality. That's basically what they're trying right. to do. So then you go, oh, it kind of feels that way. It's not a painting at all. It's worth about 20, 25 bucks. So okay. the next time I want you to feel texture, I want you to carefully with your hand or with your eyes, I want you to look for oil on canvas. Now, there also mm -hmm. is oil on, can oil, oil on canvas board, which is known as illustration board, where they take a piece of canvas and they wrap it over a piece of cardboard. That's fine. Okay. That's a different type of okay. thing. But what you have is actually a produced print they were sold in furniture stores in the 1950s buy a couch get a print basically 
Oh, yeah. okay. So, but it's always going to be on canvas. There's a reason why they sold it to you for three dollars and seventeen cents. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, it's I mean, you pretty. didn't overpay. You didn't overpay. So that's good. Thank you so much. Yeah. No. Thank you. Always good to have all of you with me. What fun! What fun! So. Um, in terms of this, it's wonderful to be able to have, you know, special guests. And thank you very much for supporting the channel with um, Super Chats and Super Stickers. And I'll be happy to take your questions. You know that you can always ask questions of me. And uh, I'm happy to do that. I was talking a little bit at the top of the show about, of course, um, about, of course, things like collectibles of the future. And I want to talk to you about them a little bit because collectibles of the future are really going to be harder and harder to identify. Now, I do it all the time. Um, remember, I was, some of you who have been following me for decades, a lot of you have been following me for decades, and some of you are new to the channel and new to the videos, and thanks for watching. But um, when I talk about what pieces are going to be valuable in the future, I tell you what to look for. And some of the things that are coming out now, what to look for, what's special and unusual. For example, you know, the thank you heroes, these pieces that relate only to 2020 and to, of course, the pandemic. So these kinds of toys that relate to a particular time period, a slice of time, just a small amount of time is going to be important or something that's unusual that doesn't always happen all the time. One of the unusual things, of course, in sports collecting is anything that, ha that has to do with, of course, the quarterback, Tom Brady, who was always with from the beginning of his career in 2000, the New England Patriots, and now is with a different team to see that particular player on a different team, of course, relates. So that becomes important for sports collectors. If people are looking for the collectors with respect to sports collectibles of the future, I want you to look about, think about those. The other thing has to do with anniversaries. What will in fact be the collectible coming forward? Things like American Brilliant Cut Glass, um, American, of course, um, pressed glass, early American pressed glass. The glass pieces are going to be very, very strong. You're going to see a lot of movement in glass, which is why I'm going to start telling you more and more about glass, about things like um, early American pressed glass pieces, pieces like from the Sandwich Glass Company in Massachusetts. You know, I ever do this? You know, you're going to the Cape, right? You're going to the Cape and Sandwich is down here where you actually come across um, the Sagamore Bridge and, of course, the Bourne Bridge into onto Cape Cod in Massachusetts, is a place I spent a lot of time. So basically, I want you to think about those kinds of things. The other thing, speaking of colonial pieces, it's going to be the colonial revival pieces are going to start coming onto the market soon, and they should be bought now where they're low and then sold in 2026, right? Held until 2026 and then sold in that time period. I want you to think about that too. Hey, we've got a question from Wyoming lady. Thanks for your super chat. Hi, Dr. Lori, made it to another live. Great, good to see you. Um, been typing in drafts on list perfect, per perfectly all day. This is my break time with you. Well, thanks so much. I'm so glad that you're here with me. Thanks so much for being with me. I hope that you are working hard at, of course, sourcing your inventory, finding your pieces, shopping is what I typically call it. And then of course, also getting ready to List those things if you're a reseller or find the best spot for them if you're a collector in your home or in your office. So that's great. Thanks, Wyoming lady. I appreciate it very much. Hello, Lori. I was looking for you. You just sold an ornament, Tom Brady, for 50 bucks. This is the time to sell it. I've been telling you for the last week, you know, up until tomorrow. And then Monday, guess what? Boom. You know, we're going to forget about Tom until the season starts again. So yeah, good time to sell it. 50 bucks for an ornament. That's wonderful. Very good. So you want to think about those types of things. Hi, Joanne. Is it possible to have an antique German bisque porcelain doll that is unmarked? Yes, it is. It certainly is possible to have an unmarked German bisque doll. Remember with the dolls, you can find the marks on, in certain areas. I want you to look at the eyes. I want you to look at the eyebrows and the lips to see how they are painted. I want you to also look at the back of the neck for marks. You can also see the marks on the lower back of the body. So a lot of different places, but yes, you could have an unmarked German bisque doll. Some of them as early as the late 19th century um, and some, of course, early 20th century. Hello, Karen. Thank you for the super sticker and thanks for supporting the channel. You support everybody, all the community members, and you also support, of course, me making new videos for you and giving you more information that nobody else can give. Thank you, KNS, for the super sticker. I appreciate your help. And it tells me that what the information I'm giving you is helping you. And that's what I want to do. I want to make sure that the information that I'm giving is helping you in, in whatever way possible. So that's why we answer all those questions. 
and help too. Hello, Regina. Do you recommend a specific type of loop to check for marks? I recommend this loop right here. Where do you find the loop? You find the loop, of course, at drlaurieV.com slash shopping. And make sure that you check your settings, okay? Make sure that you have all of your settings so you can access the images that are on those pages so you can shop right there. And I appreciate you doing that. And of course, um, I want to make sure that you get the one that I recommend. That's what I recommend. That's what I've used for years and years and years. It is a 30 time magnification as well as a 10 time magnification. I'm sorry, I was mid sentence, but I've got a guest. So I got to go to the guest. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Uh, Hi. <laughs> I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Oh, I'm LaVon. I just. <laughs> Hi, LaVon. How are you? Uh, how did you acquire this? Oh, I got this um, very rare patent um, hanging basket. Uh, for okay. me or for 20. That's good. Up, right here where you have what it. What colors are these? Very nice. How did you acquire it? Did you purchase it? Uh, I had gotten this from the antique store. Um, it was like around, I think, like 70 some dollars for this rare milk glass hobnail patent. It's a little bit thick. It's a nice milk glass, but it's a little bit thick. And the thickness of the milk glass will help you to identify date. So I want you to look for the thickness of that milk glass. That particular piece dates to the 1950s into the 1960s. And I want you to see that band. Do you see that band that is plain around the bottom of your piece? Yeah, they're giving you a whole screen so I can explain. That band at the bottom of the screen of the, of the piece, in fact, indicates the late 50s into the 60s for that particular type of milk glass. Value on that piece is just about what you paid is worth about $85. Okay. You enjoy it. Good for you. You got a little bit of a discount there. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I love my guests. It's nice of all of you to be with me. And thanks to my guests for showing me their stuff as well. So when you're thinking about these pieces, like that particular piece, there are certain elements that will help you to identify time period. You know, I know you're all going through listings and listings and listings. You're looking at pictures. And I looked all over the internet, Dr. Lauren. I looked here and I looked through this image and that image. And I scrolled and scrolled and scrolled. If you learn how the pieces are made, you can stop a lot of that scrolling, which is why I tell you, watch my videos and watch them again. You know, this was very true with respect to the, um, the, the recent perfume bottle video. You're all scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. You can't tell. Once you learn the history and the manufacturing tenants or methods, all of a sudden, I can teach you what to look for. It's going to stop a lot of that just, oh, I went all over. I'm looking all over the internet. I'm still not finding it. I want you to find it. And you can find it that way. Look at that curl. I got to get rid of that. <laughs> oh, I received my loop, my diamond tester, your root loop, your diamond tester, your measuring tape, small bags yesterday. And speaking of bags... Remember I told you that I listened to you? Well, a lot of you have been asking me for merchandise. So, of course, we have the Dr. Lori Says I'm Priceless t-shirt. And we've got the Dr. Lori Says I'm Priceless mugs that all of you say you love and I love too. Well, and other merchandise, things like the jewelry boxes and such. But you asked me for a tote bag. And you know what? Community tab after the show, if you're watching in the replay, the extras are always on the community tab, so you gotta, you've got to subscribe and then go to the community tab. You can get that tote bag that you all been asking for. See, I listen to you. <laughs> but after the after the end of the broadcast, you can of course go get that at the community tab. Hi, Bobby. Bobby's been drawing. She's been working on her drawing skills. I've been watching her drawing. I'm I'm tuned into all of you. Bobby, you're doing a great job. Bobby, what was your question? I was talking. I missed it. <laughs> How or where can I identify a painting without a signature? Oh, uh, right here. I can help you. You can send me a picture, right? And I can help you. And that's how you can identify it without a signature. Don't be afraid of paintings without a signature. Just look for a painting that looks good to you. Look for colors that make sense. Look for a nice standard stretcher size. I talk about standard stretcher sizes when we talk about paintings. And of course, um, on the videos. And um, look for, of course, tips like staples or nails. And look for the color of the canvas. Look for the type of the stretcher. I give you all this information on the other videos, but you can do that. Brenda asked for a tote bag. There you go, Brenda. I'm listening to you. 
you want a tote bag, well, you can get it at the community tag after the, at the community tab, excuse me, after, after this, after we're done live. Yeah, that's a great idea. So we got it. We did it. Takes a while. It didn't take that long, really. <laughs> Oh, got a guest. Here we go. Do you like the guests? I want to hear everybody. I want to see everybody going, the guest, the guest, the guest. I recognize this guest. How are you? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Tell everybody you your name. Deb. Hey, Deb, Ohio. how are you? Ohio. Ohio. Hey. Ohio. Ohio. Right. Ooh. How is Eric, Deb? <laughs> Probably sleeping on a couch watching TV. <laughs> well, see, that's good. He has to do that this weekend, right? A lot of, a lot of yeah. TV to to what to nap during this weekend. So <laughs> right. I, hope you, guys, sleep, I hope you guys are doing well. What can I help you with? It is so cold. I love the guests. Sylvia loves the guests. I love the guests too. It's fun. It's kind of big. It's a um, Bernard. Hi, Bernard. Okay. See if I Sorry. I was, I was doing three things at once. I'll be quiet. Oh, it's fine. Um, it's a serograph. David Schluss. I like it. <laughs> I like Number it. 212 of 350. Yeah, I like it a little less, but not a lot less. Right. It's 350 is kind of high, but not terrible. But that's right. typical for that artist. I like the frame. I like the mat. I like the condition. It's in good shape. We had to take the back off because it had fallen down into the frame. So, yeah, that's not a big deal, though. You knew how to right. do that. You got some linen tape, right? You didn't yes. use regular tape to retape it, right? Linen tape, acid free, museum quality tape. It's on my shopping page. Um, you I can use it there tape that we use in scrapbooking so it should be fine but i found it free yes because remember scrapbooking you're moving it through you're moving it through you're opening the pages but with of course uh works of art they're encased so right. just check it out compare them maybe they're they're similar compare them but anyway well, we found a little plastic corner so we just put the tape over the plastic corners onto the mat so we put the corner back where it should have been then put the piece back into the corner a is framer's corner, which is plastic, which looks like yes. a little triangle, and you shoved it in there, and then you secured yep. it, right? Yes. Yes. That's what they're going to do. That's yes. all the framer's going to do. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, so, because remember, the frames are important because the frames protect the work of art. Okay? Right. Um, it looks like it's acid-free matte board. It wasn't discolored, right? In the window, that's that cutout right. chart, right? Okay. So, I would say value on that piece. Is that what you want to know? Yes. <laughs> of course. Okay, great and I want to say hi. I know, I know. Value I on mean. that piece. You're probably looking somewhere in the four hundred to four hundred and fifty dollar range in that frame. So remember the frame has a value too. Thank you, Deb. Good to see you. Thank you. Remember, Thank you. all of my values are based on actual sales records. You know, they call them realized sales. Actual sales records where somebody actually paid that amount. Not all these crazy numbers that you see. There are a lot of people who will go, I don't know what it is, so I'm going to put it up at $5,000. And then somebody else sees it, you know, while that other person's doing their research because they don't know what it is really worth and they don't know how to analyze the market. And they go, I'm just going to put a big number, high number on it while I figure it out, right? Somebody else sees the high number and then says, well, I have one like that. It must be worth $5,000. This is how you hurt all of yourself, hurt each other and everybody else. So I want to make sure that you know it's based on actual sales records. Hi, Dawn. Haven't sold my prize yet, but I've tripled my income since our last our chat last week. Wanted to give you a shout out. Thank you so much. Dawn, tripled your income. There you go. You are not the only one who has told me. You've been watching. You've been doing a video call with me, or you've used one of our other services, or you're just watching and sharing the videos and learning and taking time to learn and get it, and you're tripling your income. That is impressive. So I'm doing the work, but you're doing the work too. So thank you for doing the work and putting the time in. I'm so happy that my information and education is helping you to make money. Still doing the three appraisal deal. I'll have to check that out. Hi, Jillian. Yeah, check it out. There's lots of deals that we give and I give them, of course, at drlorev.com. And of course, it's on my specials page and you can find that at drlorev.com too. You're all special. That's why we made a specials page. It's right at the top of the website and it says save now. So you can't miss it. Go check that out. There's the link. There's the link. Okay. Yeah. The staff has been working really hard. They've been working very hard. Another guest. Wow. I love it that you're all being guests with me. Great. Hey. What's going on? Hello. How are you? Go blue, Dr. Lori. Go blue, Mary. <laughs> How's it going? It's going great. Great. That is great. I like that. I picked this up at an auction. Whoops. Yeah. Follow the camera with four glasses. Okay. 
No chips, no flea it. bites, no nicks in it. I paid like twenty six dollars. Glasses. Somebody didn't have the other two glasses. Where are the glasses? You need six. I know it only had four, but it was so cute. It's cute. I'll give you cute. How old do you think it is? Let me quiz you. What do you think? I was guessing somewhere between the forties and fifties. I think it's older. It's younger than the forties. It's probably nineteen fifty two to nineteen sixty. It's okay. not. It's not anywhere near the sixties. It's the fifties. And and you notice it has, of course, the applied ornament, right? I can take yes, these off. Yes, yes, very much so. You can feel it. Yep, you can feel it. Good. Okay. What about the shape? The shape will tell you a lot about glass, right? That's one of the things I liked was the unique lip on it. I just thought right. that was really unique. That's it's that's not quite called a hanging heart. The top, if you look at it like a bird's eye view, like do this for me. So yeah, so it's not quite a hanging heart because the heart would have the little point at the top. Yeah. But it's actually a hanging piece. It kind of goes over just slightly, right? It's slender. They get fatter in the 60s. Okay. okay. Everything gets fatter in the 60s. The, the cookie jars, the pitchers, the whole deal. And from the 60s it. and I got fatter, so I agree. <laughs> well, we all did that. You're good. But tell me, um, it gets slender toward the bottom and then it kind of flares. It's very 50s. I yeah. want you to think of a poodle skirt. Right. Oh, there it is. You see the pattern at the bottom? Yeah. Okay. So the pattern is pretty distinctive as well. I would say, um, what did you pay at the auction? I, I think I paid 26 for it. 26 for four the whole set. and the pitcher. Yeah. The whole set is worth just about $125, $140 in that. Nice. Now, what I want to make sure that you do is if you are cleaning it, I want a white cotton cloth, kind of like my gloves. Get rid of the dust, that's it. Do not submerge it in water because when you submerge those older pieces of glass in water, it's like you're diving into a cold swimming pool. It's like a shock to the system. So be careful when you clean it before you sell it and make sure you're careful with that shipping if you're gonna sell it. Good for you, Doc. Alrighty, thanks. My pleasure. Really nice pieces, but I want you to start to look at form and shape and size and, and sort of the, the contrasting elements of pieces like glass. And I've been telling you about decanters. Decanters are really, really hot right now. Pictures as well. Hello, Sharon. Thank you so much. I thought I had a signed print of a poster by John St. Louis in the round, but it's a sketch on paper. The original sketch signed in ink in the bottom in pencil thoughts. Okay, a couple of thoughts I have for that. So you think you had a print of a poster, but instead you think now that you have a actual drawing. Couple of ways you can tell. Look for an indentation all the way around. If you have an indentation, which is called a plate mark, then you do not have an original drawing. Some lithographs can look like original graphite or pencil drawings. So you wanna be aware of that. The other thing I want you to do is I want you to follow the strokes. If you follow the, this is, yes, exactly. This is how to tell. Like I'm gonna teach you how to tell. So, you know, you're not going, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I want you to be sure. So the other thing I want you to do is follow the stroke. So if you are actually trying to draw that portion, right? This is why it's important with what, what my friend Bobby is doing. She's drawing, right? She's drawing every day. And that's gonna help her to train her eye in, in fact, identifying other pieces because the forms come first. You shadow basically around the form. So if you wanna draw an apple, you're gonna shadow the apple around that circle of the, of the middle of the apple. So I want you to look for that. In terms of value, if you do have an original drawing, it's usually somewhere between 50 and 60% above, right, the value of the same artist's work that's a print. Because you're dealing with an original value up here versus a reproduction value down here. That doesn't mean reproductions are bad, they're good looking, they can be um, interesting to execute and such, but you really wanna look for that original work of art, you know, one of a kind, you know, like me, one of a kind. <laughs> All right, Stephanie, thank you for the super sticker. I hope that means that the that the channel is helping you, that you're enjoying your interactions with the community, not just me, but everybody. And also that you're doing very well and you're succeeding in learning more about art, antiques and collectibles or reselling. So I'm so glad people are making money too. Any advice for a budding appraiser, please, Nancy? Yes, go to school and learn it. Learn it from your gut so you can see it, so you know it. And if you don't know it, don't be afraid to say, I don't know, I can find out. Okay, that's the thing. If you're going to be an appraiser, I always think, and this is for me, this isn't for everybody who doesn't have to do this, I don't think you should be an appraiser and a buyer and seller. It's one or the other. 
right? You either appraise or those of you who want to buy and sell, okay, that's one thing. But, you know, you have to make sure that you don't have that conflict of interest. But budding appraiser is great. You can learn a lot from me. And I know that that's what you're trying to do, which is why you're here. Make sure you're learning from an expert, not just folks who want to tell you that they're experts. Should I try to fix my Bell Getty's brooch or sell as is with missing faux pearls? Okay. Um, expert collectors will act or seasoned collectors will know if you put a new pearl into an existing or vintage um, brooch. Okay. So they're going to recognize that you've got something new that you fixed. Whether you decide to fix it or not, just make sure that you document and you reveal that you fixed it. Okay. You know, it's not bad to have repairs as long as they are professionally done and done well. And maybe you're the one who can professionally do that. The other thing is just make sure that you note it. Okay. Nobody wants to be surprised and don't, and don't think, you know, give your buyers enough credit that they may be able to recognize that the piece is a new piece in an old, in an old brooch, but very good question. And it's impressive that you thought of that too. Thank you very much. Thank you for the super sticker too, Mary. Keep going. You're going to find some more great things. So I want you to get an understanding of that and know what's what. And I want you to remember that a lot of extras are on my community tab, but you have to subscribe on YouTube so you can click on the community tab. So don't forget about the community tab. It's a great place to get those extras. A lot of the information, of course, that I give when I'm appraising pieces on my table are also on the community tab. So don't forget those extras. Thanks for the questions and thanks for the super chats and the super stickers. They support the channel. Okay. Other questions. Hi, Dr. Lori. Love your show. Thank you. How important is provenance when trying to sell pieces at large auction houses? Well, you know, it depends. It depends on how much how much credence the auction house puts on it. Um, sometimes the auction houses will be very, very um, interested and they will scrutinize the provenance. They'll want to make sure the provenance is perfect. It's hard to get a perfect provenance. Um, but then other times they say, well, you know, we've got a lot of these and we sell them and they sell well, so we're not going to worry so much about it. It depends. But when it comes to Big ticket items, you know, when I appraised, for example, a Leonardo da Vinci or when I appraised a Renoir or when I appraised a Andy Warhol, provenance is very important. It's very important because they're asking a lot of money for these pieces. The estimates on those pieces are into the millions of dollars. So when I appraise something in that million or more than million dollar range, like a Goya, for example, a wonderful Spanish uh, work of art then what ends up happening is that provenance has to be specific and it has to be traced all the way back. And that's a research project and it's not easy and not just anybody can do it. The other thing is the big auction houses want experts helping them and doing the appraisals. You know, if you just said, well, I know it was my great grandma's and I know it was this and I know it was that, that's good, but they want to make sure that they have some scholarly supporting evidence. So very good question. Do you watch Antiques Rojo and yell at people when the appraisers are wrong? I don't yell at people. My cardiologist says, don't get upset. So don't watch anything that upsets you. Uh, but I have to say that what I think Antiques Roadshow has done for the field is it really allowed people to realize that their stuff can be valuable and that their stuff can be historically interesting, not only valuable, it's not only about money. And it helped museums. It helped a lot of people realize, wow, I should be in a museum just like, you know, the Queen of England should be in a museum, you know, that kind of thing. So yes, so I would say that that's what I that's what I like about it. But you know, as a museum professional for a long time and devoting a career and a life to art antiques, collecting museums and education, I will say that I don't think Antiques Roadshow has been the only thing that's helped people. But I think putting it into the public eye has really helped people feel comfortable in museums, and that's what it is because museums are for all of us. So go to your museum next, your local museum next time you know, bring a family when they come over because it's a great way to train your eye without being tempted to buy. Hi, Bernard. Do you do lives if I'm doing an estate sale and would like you to evaluate what I have? Thank you. And I love your show. Um, yeah, I do all different kinds. Thank you for the super chat. I do all kinds of, of course, I help in all different ways. You can do a um, video call with me through, uh, you know, an estate sale before you open the estate sale to everybody. Sure. I do that all the time. We do all kinds of things to help estate sales sellers, you know, those folks who are hosting estate sales, um, somebody, somebody who just isn't sure of a particular piece, you have something unusual. I mean, it all depends. And I've got all different kinds of services that will help all of you. And I hope that the channel is helping too. So thank you for supporting the channel. I appreciate that. That's what you're doing with the super chats and the super stickers. So thanks for those. 
Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun with a lot of the pieces that I've been able to see. Uh, let's see, the treasure trunk, JWS treasure trunk. What's the difference with cut glass? Some is rough cuff and some is smooth. Okay, there's a lot of different kinds of glass and there's a lot of different terms out there. So I want you to identify some of the more prominent terms, the terminology like American Brilliant cut glass. So it depends on what types of machines were utilized and the process of having the resulting cut. Sometimes you'll see something that you'll say is called cut glass when technically it's etched glass. So those are the types of things. It's nuances, really. So there are ways to actually tell, and I'll talk more about glass. And I have a lot of glass videos up that you can look at and you can actually look to. The same way I have plates and china videos up that are instruction. They're instructional videos that will teach you about, in fact, how to identify this. Hello, Maury. Thank you very much for the super sticker. I always love to see Lori. I'm glad that you're doing well. Thank you for being with me tonight live. The Sugar Shack Farms, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I hope things are good at the Sugar Shack. How could it be bad? Hi, Bernard. There's Bernard. Bernard is really supporting the channel tonight. Thank you so much. Um, multiple questions and super stickers. Thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it. And I like to do the shout out. I know some of you are watching the replay. You go, why did you do the shout out? I do the shout out because my mother taught me to be courteous. My mother taught me that I should be polite. If you're doing something to help everybody, say thank you. So that's why I'm doing it. I know you could take it. I know you're all right with that. So a couple of things like that. Don't forget about that. I want to listen to you and know what's going on. Thank you for being a guest. It's lovely to see the guest too. If it wasn't for AR, I would have found you searching for better antique appraisals. If it wasn't for AR, I wouldn't have found you searching for better antique appraisals. Well, I'm so glad that you actually found me looking for better ones than, oh, AR, Antiques Roadshow, I guess. Yeah, well, you know, I think it's just like anything else. When you start to make comparisons, you start to realize who's going to really help me and who wants to really help me. Who's trying to do something for their own gain, right? So it just depends. I'm trying to do this to help you. You all know that, you know, I don't have to do this. I want to do this. I want you to get it. I want you to learn it. And I think that it's wonderful to extend the field. It's, you know, in graduate school, they would say, figure out a way to extend the field, to kind of move it all forward. And um, I think all of you are helping me to do that too. So thank you. It's not just, oh, Dr. Lori's so great. You're also great. So stay with me. We'll learn a lot. Hi, Kim. I brought a beautiful green glass vase with controlled bubbles and gold flecks in the applied clear glass. I'm thinking Murano, but the bottom's a little rough. Does all Murano have polished bottoms? Well, depends on the time period. Depends on the time period. Um, typically, you will see a polished bottom on Murano pieces that are, of course, um, for the trade. Okay. So the ones that are, you know, they're pretty distinctly Murano uh, from the 1960s and on. What you typically don't always recognize, those earlier ones can be a little bit more rough. You might have Murano. The way we'll know, send me a photo. It's easy to do right through our website. Send me a photo. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Thank you very much. JWS Trunk Treasure, the Treasure Trunk. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and for being here live, for asking those questions and helping with, of course, the conversation. Hi, Libby. I have two Kincaid lithographs that were double signed by Mr. Kincaid. Okay. <laughs> I got to hold my head a minute. <laughs> One signature in front of me. Are double signatures worth more than a single signature? Okay. Thomas Kincaid had so many things going, which is why he is who he is and he's so well known. So first of all, very, very large print runs. I'd like to know the number of the print run. That's going to impact it. Because if you have number 2,469 of 32,250, well, guess what? You can have triple, quadruple, a million signatures. And of course, it's still going to be a problem because of the number of prints in the run. It is not uncommon for double signatures to be on comic skin caves. I've appraised a lot of them, and many of them do have double signatures. But again, what you want is you want to make sure that you have a couple of things. First of all, if you have the, those, those certificates on the back are important. Not certificates of authenticity, but gallery certificates that document that they were sold through the Kincaid Gallery and that are not some of the repros. Be careful, okay? Probably that is what you have. And I want you to think about, of course, the number, the print number. So if you can tell me that information, I'd be able to, you know, zero in a little bit better for you. I got to move because one leg is asleep. Wow, it's really asleep. Okay. Okay, I'm going to like shake my head and shake my, what, did you ever hear that? You like shake your head and all of a sudden your, your leg will wake up. You know, all the tinglys. 
You're like, oh gosh, Dr. Lori's losing it. Okay, what's next? Let's see. A couple of other things. So you're asking these questions. You, I'll answer anything live. This is your time, of course, for me to do that. Don't forget that Sunday, of course, tomorrow, Sunday at five, I'm going to do my regular weekly premiere of the new, the new, of course, video. And what's great about the new video is, I told you I've been listening to you. The new video, you all want thrifting tips. I'm giving you more thrifting tips. You all want safe tests. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about safe tests. And you all said, why don't you appraise all the things on the table? I'm going to praise all the things on the table. You see the table? I'm going to praise everything on the table. I'm going to talk about glass. I'm going to talk about patina, the real information about patina. I'm going to talk also about um, colonial pieces, those dishes that you say, I think I have that dish, Dr. Lori, right? Those colonial revival pieces from the 1970s and how they're going to make another revival coming up in 2026. So I want you to learn all of that so you can get the stuff now so you can sell it for a big killing coming up in just a couple of years. I've been telling a lot of you to think about when to sell it. When are those movements going to happen, right? When's the market going to move? You're going to see American Brilliant Cunt Glass, which has been down for a long time. You're going to see that start to climb. You watch it. Mark my words. People who are selling it for a couple bucks, 20, 40, 60, 80, that kind of thing, those pieces are going to come up. I was talking on a video call today to a lovely woman in Missouri, and I said, you've got to think about this. You know, some of this stuff can go now if you really have to generate some income for the family now. But some of those better pieces you should hold on to, they're going to come up in the market because that's what I do. I watch the market. I watch what the market is doing. I know all the different objects and how to evaluate them and look for pieces, you know, to look for pieces like I was telling you about this piece right earlier. If you didn't see it earlier, I gave you tips about how to tell the date of wood, particularly with masks and such. So you got to check out the beginning of this, replay it if you have to. But I want you to have an understanding of that. That's what I'm trying to help you do. Hello, Joseph. Dr. Lori, I've purchased a Grandma Moses glitter landscape. Oh, wonderful. How can I authenticate it? You can ask me to authenticate it. Send me a picture. I'll help you with respect to getting you an appraisal of it. Congratulations. It's always good to get the big names. I was appraising pieces the other day, Chagall and Degas. And oh my gosh, I had some wonderful big names. Um, coming through. Pieces that were found at thrift stores and estate sales and yard sales. So, you know, if you have an opportunity, get out there and look for some of these pieces. Expert answers to your questions. That's right. The expert with decades in the field in major museums, the Yale Art Gallery, the Allentown Art Museum. I've, of course, worked at major universities, Penn State and other universities, and I want you to get it. Photo 66 videos. Hi, thank you very much for Supporting the channel. You're learning so much from me. Great. Do old high school diplomas from the early 1900s have any value? Thanks. Well, I have to say that, you know, it depends on whose diploma it is. The yearbooks definitely have value. You know, if you find somebody like, I don't know, Johnny Unitas's yearbook, that kind of thing, um, just coming up with a football. I guess I've got football on the brain. And the other thing that I would say is, yes, some diplomas can have some value. You know, what if you had one of the Vanderbilt's diplomas, that kind of thing. And also just having a diploma because the majority of the society in the early 20th century did not complete school. A lot of those kids, of course, were working in factories in the early 20th century prior to World War II. We don't really have teenagers in this idea of sort of um, having a life as a teenager until after World War II. You know, because those kids are basically little kids at that time are working in shops trying to help support the family, how to try to contribute to the family's finances. So that's what you're looking at. But yes, they can have some value. Follow up on the Kincaid prints. They are number 113 of 1950. That is not so bad for Thomas Kincaid. Thank you for the follow up, Libby. They are not so bad. Thank you for the super uh, sticker too, the super chat too. So if it's number 113 of 1950, it's not that big a print run for Kincaid, okay? Also, is it one of his characteristic kind of little like, you know, glow, glowing little cottage scenes? That's going to be important too. So you have to think about that. And then size will be important. Typically, those are going to be pretty standard size, 16 by 20, that kind of thing. So you could be into the, into the thousands easily. I'd have to see a picture of it to make sure. Yeah, nice. Um, original frames, they like the original frames from the Thomas Kincaid galleries. Um, collectors tend to like those, but there's a lot of them out there. So there's a lot of competition and you want to think about that too. That's the other issue with uh, artists like um, Salvador Dali. There's so many of them out there. 
Um, Louis Eichhardt, another artist like that. So in that particular in that particular realm, you know, it's not like oh we're getting the one original. Excuse me. Please define American Brilliant Cut Glass. Okay, American Brilliant Cut Glass is in fact a type of glass that is American Brilliant Cut. So it's a piece that typically we see coming out of places like upstate New York, places like South New Jersey, places like um, uh, North Carolina. American Brilliant Cut Glass actually, this is a called pressed glass and it actually is cut pretty severely and it has very, very bright reflective qualities of the light. So you'll see the very deep cuts and you'll also see certain patterns that are repeated like a starburst pattern. You'll see a couple of um, pieces that relate to that. And it's very, very popular in the early 1900s, between about 1910 and about 1930. You see a lot of it. And it's candy dishes and bowls and vases and pitchers. Beautiful. Not etched glass, which has that little frosted look. And usually those are little leaves and little flowers, just details around. But American Brilliant Cut Glass is literally, when you put light on it, it sparkles all over the place. So, Thanks for the question. PNW Explorer. Hey, Dr. Lori. Hey, for lamps, how do you tell if an old porcelain piece is valuable without any marking and if it has been rewired? Okay, so it's a porcelain lamp. So the base is porcelain, right? And then it's been rewired. Has there been a hole placed right through the middle of it? So imagine it was this. I got to put on a glove. Hold on. So imagine it's this, right? This is actually a piece of Glidden pottery from Alfred, New York. And this particular piece is a piece. Wait, I got to get this on. Okay. <laughs> And then did they put a hole right through there and then they put the wire through it and then the lamp shades up here? Is that what you're talking about? If that's what you're talking about, then you violated the piece of porcelain, eh, right? If it's a figurine and there's a pole going up the back of the figurine that maybe the, the wire is going through that metal pole, that's better because you haven't in fact violated the piece. So the question is, if it's unmarked, is it on a base and you could take it off the base or remove the base so you can see if there's a mark, okay? If you can't tell, show me a picture of it and I can tell from the porcelain, I can tell from the hand painting, I can tell if it's a figurine, I can tell, in fact, if it is just a bulbous kind of form that's been painted on top of. So I can identify it for you. Is it Japanese? Is it Austrian? Is it German Meissen? Is it yeah, um, English Staffordshire? What is it? kind of thing. Is it Sevs? Is it Limoges? What is it? So I can do that for you. Could we be collecting face masks to sew into quilts for resale in about 20 years? Yes. 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 Face masks. Yes. And the first ones. Did you notice at the beginning of the pandemic? I'm sure you saw one of these videos because I remember doing it for TV networks. Um, they said, you know, what are we collecting now? And I said, we're going to be collecting these textiles face masks. We're going to be, we brought out all the old sewing machines because nobody was making, getting face masks fast enough in March and April of uh, 2020. Everybody was making their own. Everybody said, oh, I got a sewing machine. I'll make a face mask. So yes, I think you're going to see face masks quilts. I think you're going to see face masks in works of art. I think you're going to see big installation pieces of the big postmodern artists that are going to be face masks. I think you're going to be seeing face masks for a long time. I don't think it's going to be something that we're going to get rid of. I think it's going to be one of those cultural objects, okay? It's going to be a, a really indicative object of the early 2020s. Hi, Tiffany. Tiffany, so excited to watch you live. I think you're fabulous. I think you're fabulous too. Thank you very much for the super chat. It's nice to see you. And I'm very happy that you're here live. I guess you like eight o'clock. You had a, we had a poll. We listened to you. We changed it to eight o'clock. So I hope that's working for you. <laughs> Do oil lamps have significant value? I have a collection. One's Vic, a Victorian antique. Yeah. Well, Victorian oil lamps were very popular in the early 2000s. 2000 to 2005, you saw everybody was paying a lot of money for oil lamps. And then you saw them change. Um, if you have the hurricane, right, the interior hurricane, and then a globe on top, the other thing that I want you to think about is make sure that you have the original knob, if it's an Aladdin knob or a B and H knob, the little knob matters. It will tell you who made it, right? The manufacturer. Um, the wick is important too for those oil lamps. Sometimes they're called finger lamps. If you have a collection, just be careful, right? Be careful that you don't break them or knock them over. Make sure you don't dust them too much. If you have them in a china cabinet, you know what I'm gonna say. Once a month for about eight hours, you know, when you're watching me, go open up the, the china cabinet. 
and uh, make sure you're getting a little air to flow in there because heat will do more damage in your china cabinet than, of course, dust or dirt will ever hope to. So, But yeah, they, that collection can be good. Anytime you add to a collection, you add another lamp, you increase the value of all the lamps a little bit. Okay, lots of great questions tonight. Blinking an eye pass. Blinking an eye pass. That's good. Do not be a earrings in great condition have any value. Definitely. Definitely. Oh my gosh. I've been talking about costume jewelry. Have you been watching my videos? Not be a big name in costume jewelry. Many of the big names. And I list them for you on my website where you can go to the research tab on drlaurieb.com. So yeah, sure. You can go and look there and you can learn more about all the different names. You know, the Weisses and Trafari and, you know, Eisenberg. And I was doing um, a video call appraisal, uh, a 30 minute with a big collection of, of women who had a big collection of costume jewelry who said, you know, this is really stuff that I do not wear, but I love. So I want to know the values because I want to start to give it out to my kids and grandkids. And uh, then the things that they don't want after I've decided what they should have, which I thought was great, you should decide for them. Um, then I'm going to, of course, list it on my new Etsy store. I thought that was great. You know, she's, she's getting the information that she needs so she can succeed, just like all of you. Just like all of you who are saying, Dr. Lori, I tripled my income. Dr. Lori, I'm making $4,000 more a month, a month watching your videos. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear that you're succeeding. That's what I want to hear. Because other, other channels can't do that. They can't give you the things, the information that's going to empower you. So you can do this. So if you hate that job, you can leave it. So if you really just want to have a little bit of extra money, you can do it. You got the gem tester. Did it work? Is it great? You can just test it onto your diamonds. I don't have any diamonds on, but you can test it onto your diamonds. And that's that's would be a great help for those of you who really are looking into jewelry. There are a couple of you who have said, Dr. Lori, I moved into jewelry because you told me about it and I'm doing great. So costume jewelry too. And uh, don't forget about the great places that you can actually sell. Don't forget about those selling tips, things like, you know, when to check out those auctions online and how to look at the photo. MKKP, thank you very much for the support. I have what looks like a 1960s Fla Flavio Poli. Okay, some are so, so vase in blue, yellow, red, but no mark. Are there fakes of this style to be on the lookout for? Yes, yes. Difficult. Difficult to um, identify the fakes. The fakes are pretty good. But um, if you show me the piece, I need three images, right? And then I need one picture of the bottom um, to be able to identify that piece for you. But yes, yes. So you got to watch out because a lot of people say, oh, well, it looks easy enough, right? Hi, Holly. Any info on Princess House? Is it really collectible? First time viewer. Thanks for being with me, Holly. Well, I have to tell you that a lot of people like Princess House and a lot of people did collect or do collect Princess House. Um, I haven't seen the market really change too much. It stayed pretty, pretty, uh, what would you call it? Level, right? Pretty level, the market. But the problem really with Princess House is there, it was, it, it has a form that looks a lot like some of the other big names. So a lot of people say, well, why do I have to get Princess House? I can get the actual big name, the Waterfords and such. So look into that. But Princess House does have a pretty loyal following. Um, I would say that I haven't seen the market really spike at this point. So if you're just starting the collection, you might want to think about something a little higher end. How do you value a Jay Heath blue and white picture from 1845? How do you know that it's from 1845? Made in Ontario. Brought into New York by my uncle in 1850. So your family history tells you that it's from 1850. It was brought there in 1850. I have to see a picture of the piece, front and back. Thank you very much for your support of the channel too with the super chat. And I want you to look for a couple of things. I want you to look for the delicacy of the decoration. And I want you also to look for how thick the actual body is. You know, not thick like my body, but thick like the body of the piece. So let me take see a picture and I can help you. And Maisie K Glass Company. Does anyone know anything about dating old glass snuff bottles? I don't know. Do you want to ask anyone or you want to ask me? <laughs> so, you know, I mean, you know. Any value idea of a 1793 copy of The History of the Devil by Daniel Defoe? Good. Can't find any info on it. Thank you. We love watching you. Well, Chelsea, I'm going to tell you that as long as you think, if you think you have the real thing, right? Daniel Defoe of that time period, you're going to do pretty well. So I need a picture of the cover and I need a picture of the front page 
right? And I need any kind of um, information that might relate to the publisher, which should also be on the front page. If you can't find it on the front page with 18th century books, I want you to look at the very, very back, the last page too. Um, sometimes there's an afterword there um, with some information. It's not a technical afterword like we see in today's novel, but sort of information at the, at the back. So if you can't find it in the front, you don't want to read the whole thing, do that. But I would like to see that. I'd like to see a picture of that. Um, that could be significantly valuable. Sometimes when you can't find the answer, that's a good thing for you. People go, well, I can't find it. I can't find it. It can't be this. It can't be that. Wait a minute. Because you can't find it isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes if you can't find it, you might have something very rare. Just because all these other yahoos didn't put it up on the internet yet does not mean that it's a bad thing. You might have found something very rare. It reminds me of a woman that I met in Indianapolis who had a beautiful botanical book. It was looked like a Bible. It was a botanical book. And she said, we always thought it was a Bible until I was coming to see you today, Dr. Laurie, at one of my big events. We opened it up and we saw that there's all these pictures and all these actual prints of flowers and different types of flowers with all of their Latin names and terminology. Well, that book was very rare. She said she couldn't find it on the internet. And I said, you can't find it because it's a $10,000 botanical book and there's only a couple of them made. So that's why you didn't find it. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I came here. And I said, yeah, and it's not a Bible either. So sometimes you just have to get the real expert on the case. So anyway. That's a cool thing too, but yes, I'll, I'll take a look at that. If you want to send me a picture, you can send it. If you go to my website, of course, you can send a photo there too. So I'm so happy that a lot of you were being guests that you like to be, of course, a guest on the uh, show, on the program too. It's so much fun. Thanks for subscribing to the channel and watching. Remember, if you're watching the replay, I don't know what questions are coming up. So I have no way of being able to give you a picture or a close up because I don't know what questions are coming up to give you a, a reference. So those of you who go, oh, well, I couldn't see it. I've tried very much with the Dr. Lori cam, of course, to... Um, to show you the best we can, but I don't know what's coming up on these live because obviously they're live. So good to be with all of you. Don't forget the community tab. The community tab has lots of extras on it, including of course, the place where you can get the tote bag that you asked for. So go to the extras on the community tab. I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.